In event-driven architectures, it can be useful for services to access past events. This has previously required manual logging and archiving, and creating a mechanism to pass files and then put events back onto the bus. This can be fairly complex since you may not have access to the applications that are publishing the events. So with the announcement of Event Replay, EventBridge can now record any events processed by any type of event bus. Replay stores these recorded events in archives. You can choose to record all events or filter events to be archived by using the same event pattern matching logic that's used in rules. Event replay can be very useful for a number of different use cases. For example, after testing code fixes, being able to replay historical events provides a way to test the behavior of the code change. Or when testing new features, using historical production data from event archives, you can measure the performance of new features under load. You can also hydrate development or test environments to provide a more realistic state that approximates production. So in this video, I'll show you how to create an event archive, send some test events, and then replay the archive. So first of all, in the EventBridge console, go to the Archives menu on the left-hand side. You may not have any archives already, and just click on Create Archive. So we'll call this one My Archive, and each archive I can only be attached to one event bus. I'm going to use a custom event bus called My Custom Bus that's been already configured. Now you can store events for an indefinite period in an archive, or you can limit the term. So I'm just going to limit this to one day in my archive, and then click Next. Optionally, you can also filter events using the same pattern matching logic that you will have seen when you're building rules. In this case, I'm not going to apply any filter, and then I'll click on Event Archive. And then you get a message saying the archive has been created. So at this point, any events that go through this custom bus will automatically be appended to this archive. So before I send any events, I'm going to create a rule on this custom bus so we can log out events and see what is happening. I'm going to call this my rule, or my logging rule. I'm going to say all events because it's a custom bus. And here I'll just specify CloudWatch logs as my output with my custom bus and then create. This means everything going through that bus will then be logged to CloudWatch. So now I'll send some test events. I can do this by going to the event buses menu and choosing send events in the corner. I'll select the custom bus and we can use any event source here, but we'll say my app and my detail type. And I'll just send this data ID 1. And I'll duplicate this. You can send multiple events using this interface. I'll change this to 2. So we're going to send two events to this bus. And we get the confirmation showing those have been sent successfully. And one thing I want to just mention here is that when you create an archive, what you'll see here is a managed rule that's created called events archive my archive which is the name of the archive and it creates this event pattern and I just wanted to explain this to you so when events are replayed the service adds this attribute replay name onto your existing event and by specifying this event pattern where the this has to not exist that prevents any archives from automatically replaying multiple times now this is a managed rule, which means that it's read-only, you can't edit it, and it's managed by the service, but this is what's responsible for creating the archive. So now let's go to replay the contents of the archive. I already have one here from earlier, but I'll start a new replay. I'll call this my replay2. And I'll select the source of the archive. Now currently, every time you replay an archive, it must be sent to the same bus as the bus that originally sourced the event. So that's automatically selected for you. And you can choose to specify all of the rules on the bus that will receive the event, or you can specify individual rules. In this case, I'll select all rules. You also has to have to specify a time frame. So I'll specify a time before everything started, and then I'll go to nearly midnight tonight, and then I'll start the replay. So when replays start, they're going to a starting status here. You can look at, to see a list of all the different statuses in this dropdown just here. Replay is not immediate, and so it could take a couple of minutes to go into a, started, into a running and completed status. 
Now we only have two different events in this archive. So when we go to the log that we were logging out from the event bridge rule, we'll now see four events. So I'll switch to that rule, go to the event bus, go to my logging rule, and go to this target, which is in CloudWatch logs. So from here, if I compare the one of the original events with one of the replayed events, what you'll see is this was an original event here, and it contains this ID2 attribute that I added when I sent the test event. But going back to one of the replayed events at the top, you will see that this now has a replay name attribute with the name of the replay. So that event has been replayed back through the bus, but in our rules case, it's just logged out the event twice and we can see the difference between the two. So to learn more about archives and replays and to find links for the resources shown in this video, visit s12d.com forward slash about events.